the end. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm done. Thanks very much. <laughs> well, thank you very much um, for having me here. Um, so, as Patrick already said, I'm a um, UX design front end developer, small agency called McCall Mac and Morrison in Covent Garden. I'm also the co organiser of Ladies That UX in London. Uh, we run monthly meetups and talk about UX. So, today I'm going to talk to you about intro introversion and extroversion, um, how introverts and extroverts are, um, how they're perceived, what their, their real characteristics are, and how we interact in the workplace. Um, it's by no means an in-depth analysis of the subject, it's just meant to be kind of a, a good, fun sort of overview. Um, so, where did it come from? Um, so, Introversion and extroversion are essentially personality types. Um, personality is defined as the combination of characteristics or qualities that form an individual's unique character. Um, the, most, um, the most common and basic personality types are introversion and extroversion, according to the theories of 20th century Swiss psychiatrist Carl Jung. So the definition here, um, Extrovert, they love being around people. Um, they get energised by being around people. Introverts, they enjoy spending time on their own. Um, extroverts tend to be, their interests and attentions are direct, directed outwards. Introverts, um, they tend to think more about themselves. Um, so looking at these defini definitions, you can see that the extrovert likes to obtain gratification from what's outside the self. Uh, whereas an introvert is predominantly concerned with and interested in one's own self, tending to recharge through solitude. <clears throat> um, so I just wanted to run through some perceptions of um, extroverts um, and also what they are really. So um, some perceptions include um, that they're incredibly flirtatious, they're self-absorbed self and don't listen to others, um, and they don't like to be alone. Whereas in actual fact, they are enthusiastic, talkative, assertive, um, gregarious, they love being around other people, um, and they're more prone to boredom when on their own. Um, some activities that extroverts enjoy are large social gatherings such as parties and community activities and public demonstrations and um, business or political groups. Um, so, they love being disturbed. Not that way. Um, so, introverts, they are one of the most common characteristics that introverts are mistaken for is shyness. Um, unlike shy people though, introverts don't fear social situations, um, they just enjoy being alone. Um, you may be surprised to know that some people who you think of as social butterflies are in fact um, complete in introverts. Um, so other perceptions are that they're unfriendly, depressed, they're boring because they want to stay in, um, and they're weird, but actually um, <laughs> they... <laughs> Yeah. Um, in, actually, they're thinking, they're listening, they're observing, they're recharging, they enjoy being alone, and they're not weird. <laughs> okay. So, um... <coughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I don't know if anybody's heard of um, ambiversion. Yeah. Anyone? Yay, one person. Brilliant. <laughs> Okay, so Carl Jung, who I mentioned at the beginning, um, also classified this third middle group, and it's also known as the forgotten personality type. Um, because people usually refer to extroverts and introverts and generally don't uh, talk about an ambivert. But not everybody can be 100% extrovert or 100% introvert. Um, so people would have both an extroverted side and an introverted side. Um, one having maybe more predominance over the other. Um, so they might be introverted one day and extroverted the other day, uh, drawing their energy from both sources. Um, has anybody heard of an, a pseudo-extrovert? Anyone? 
one person again. <coughs> um, so this is basically an introvert pretending to be an extrovert. Um, so Susan Cain, who wrote the book The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking, she states that Western culture, in particular um, the American culture, is dominated by what she calls the extrovert ideal. Um, and this is described as the omnipresent belief that the ideal self is gregarious, alpha, and comfortable in the spotlight. Um, there is, it's said that there is possibly a time, li time limit on how long an introvert can appear extroverted because they want to go and be weird and, and you know, <laughs> fall into their corner and just not socialise and uh, recharge um, on their own. Here are some famous extroverts and introverts. So Steve Jobs, just kind of extrovert or introvert? I'm the earth. <laughs> That's not on the list. <laughs> <laughs> you can talk at the end. <laughs> okay, yeah. So he was a born salesman. He was comfortable with demanding the world's attention. Um, JK Rowling, anyone? Introvert. introvert, yes. So she first had the idea of Harry Potter when she was on a delayed train from Manchester to London, um, four hour delayed train. She was too shy to ask for a pen, um, and so she basically just um, whiled away the hours um, whilst this scrawny, respectable boy who didn't know he was a wizard became more and more real. Um, George Bush? <laughs> <laughs> he was an extra, he was the great back slapping Texan. Um, his personality on the political campaign trail comes across as sociable, active, outgoing, energetic. Whereas, um, in contrast, his democratic opponent, opponents, Al Gore and John Kerry, both earned reputations as being too stiff, wooden, or boring. Um, Muhammad Ali. <laughs> extrovert. <laughs> extrovert, yes. Um, Steven Spielberg. <laughs> he was an introvert. Um, what's he like to do in his spare time? He locks himself in a room and has a movie marathon, apparently. Um, Lady Gaga. <laughs> She's actually an introvert. Um, she said <laughs> she said to be introverted, I love this one, and says that the hat is a nice barrier. Um, the bigger the better. For me, it keeps the devil away. I always like uh, when I have a hat big enough to keep people away at pretentious parties. It's protection. So, yes, take from it what you will. <laughs> Okay, so really, really quickly, I just want to um, run through the quiet quiz, um, which was put together by Susan Kane. Um, and it's just really to learn where you sit on the extrovert introvert spectrum. I'm sure that some of you already know. Um, if you answer the quiz questions with true or false, just keep, um, keep a tally on your fingers. Um, keep. Yeah, keep track of your answers. Um, so, question one, um, I prefer one-on-one -on -one conversations to group activities, true or false, just keep a, keep a record. Um, number two, I often prefer to express myself in writing. Um, number three, I enjoy solitude. Number four, I seem to care about wealth, fame and status less than my peers. Number five, uh, people tell me that I'm a good listener. Six, I'm not a big risk taker. Seven, I enjoy work that allows me to dive in with few interruptions. Eight, I like to celebrate birthdays on a small scale with only one or two close friends and family members. Nine, people describe me as soft-spoken or mellow. <laughs> I prefer, uh, ten, I prefer not to show or discuss my work with others until it's finished. Number eleven, um, I tend to think before I speak. And finally, number twelve, I often let calls go through to voicemail. Okay, so, let's see what, who we've got in the room. So if you've scored more trues, then you tend to be more towards the introvert um, end of the spectrum. If you scored more false, obviously you can be extrovert. If you've got half and half, you're ambivert. So, introvert. Whoa, oh. <coughs> Extroverts. 
four, five, six, seven. Okay. Ambiverts. Cool. Yeah, when, when I did this at UX Camp Brighton, actually, we had no extroverts, uh, mainly ambiverts and some introverts. So. Um, okay, so what I wanted, I wanted to kind of pass over to you guys now. Um, I wanted to know if you have any ideas if you have any kind of um, opinion on whether it's better to be an extrovert or introvert in the field of UX, why, what to do with the team. So I am, um, yeah, so I want to know if, if you know um, introverts and extroverts in the workplace. Um, I'm a, I am an introvert, um, probably one of the quietest people at work. Um, it doesn't hold me back in any way. When I go, to, if I'm asked to a meeting, I like to beforehand. Um, if I can, I don't really like to be put on the spot. Um, and I will usually um, contact the, the person who's organising the meeting in advance just so that I can do some um, preparation. And after the meeting, I won't necessarily be the loudest person in the meeting. Um, I prefer to come away, do the work and then go back. Um, so, does anybody have any? <laughs> um, just a bit, I would want, I'd like to pass it to Chris afterwards. So Chris had a thought on this out. But um, I noticed there's a number of ambivert, but I think it's just a suggestion. I don't know what you think, but actually maybe that's the perfect personality type for UX, so that you've got kind of critical thinking with the kind of the IA inspection, but you've also got the empathy um, and the uh, ability to deal with people that you need when you're going to do. You know, user interviews are putting your shoes in, you fit yourself in the shoes of your users. So, what do you think? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, so for example, if you are maybe doing, uh, just thinking off the top of my head, some user testing, for example, yeah. maybe if you're more introvert or advert, then you, you would tend to hold back more rather than because you don't like the sciences. And, you know, um, if you're extrovert, you you might actually kind of jump in and I don't, I don't know. I mean, yeah, does yeah, anybody yeah. have any kind of opinion on that? Um, Chris, did you want to chip in with your, where is it? Chris, what's over there? Um, no, I'm just still wheeling up over the shop of being an introvert. So <laughs> um, yeah, my thing was trying to, how do you get that balance out of the team was really my question of um, when you've got a bunch of people in a room trying to collaboratively work, how do you make sure the extroverts just don't take over the whole mm -hmm. discussion? But they will. <laughs> they will. Um, a collection of rooms. <laughs> yes, there are rooms. Um, what about having tasks where people have to think individually and then and then work together? So it's like a, a, a chance to to think alone and then work collaboratively. Think alone, work collaboratively. Or even even like I said, make sure that everybody is given the chance to prepare beforehand so that they can come to the meeting with something um, so they might feel more confident about speaking rather than just saying right so today we do this <laughs> mm. um, but I don't I've got some I've got some handouts only only five of each but if, if you're a manager like this is it might be quite useful but one is how to care for experts <coughs> and one is how to care for experts so I don't know if, if you want to have a look at them then um, do so. Does anybody else have anything to say? Yeah. Um, I've heard of, sort of if you're working in Rome, then you might be some sort of level of uh, uh, ambiversion, maybe a desirable. But if you're part of a team, then having different sort of qualities, like you say, works well. Um, but it, it can be. Um, in terms of hierarchy, sometimes uh, you might have collision, but if you've got uh, an extrovert working in a more introverted team, you can actually create better goals and vice versa. Yep. And so that can have an effect upon um, how you might go about a piece of work in terms of collecting and something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think um, there have been really a few articles about this recently and the relationship to the design of the, uh, the office or studio space mm -hmm. and how um, obviously in, in let's say West Coast America there's this 
uh, trend to open space, to, uh, su uh, office space design, but actually how that's really, really bad for, for the introverts. And in the end, as, like, as Carl said, we just need a balance of spaces. That's what it comes down to. Yep. Uh, the last question, I think. Uh, yeah, okay, yep. Uh, more of a... Okay. Um, Statement wraps the, the, the introvert versus extrovert. It's like a yin and yang thing almost. And there's, there's this idea of the, the sort of balance being the, the ambivert. Uh, I think it's the wrong way of looking at things. Um, I, I don't think there's this, even even if there's a blurry line between them, I don't think there's really a line between them. I think people are more like, um, if you can imagine a Venn diagram of two circles where they almost completely overlap. In, in psychological terms, there's so much similarity between the way our brains work um, that I think this idea of finding a blend of extroversion and introversion is really a, a, a side, like a, a, a small thing, not a big thing. Um, that said, I, I, I think it's I think it's uh, it's true and it's useful. And I don't. I don't <laughs> I'm not. I'm not really bad in my way, but I, I, what I really mean is, it's, it's an, um, these are good. They're, they're valid psychological points, and they're things to take into account when you're looking at your team and working with people. They're they're part of. Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I guess yeah. the thing is that you could say, oh, I don't know if I should do that because I think I'm an introvert. Mm. Uh, and you sort of box yourself in. Uh, and I don't think that these labels should. We well, just need to be careful not to restrict But themselves. also, it's not a negative thing to be an introvert. Mm. So that's, oh, that's sure, yeah. But I better not do X yeah. because I've labelled myself as Y. Yeah. It yeah. is not necessarily a good thing. But it, that's what I was saying. Nobody is 100% extrovert, nobody is 100% introvert. <clears throat> But I really enjoyed the talk, right? Have got a shovel? Thank you very much. Thank you very much.